And welcome on my next guest. We got a recurring guest. We got Baltimore Ravens guard Bradley Bozeman. Bradley, how's everything going for you? Going great. Going great. You know, just enjoying this last little bit of all season and then going to jump back into it next Monday. So I'm excited about that. But yeah. So, how, what you been up to since football uh, kind of finished up for the, for the Ravens earlier in the year? Um, so, you know, we continue to do our food drive. We've been doing a, um, a bi weekly food drive for, um, for the Baltimore area. Um, you know, we've been able to do about 1.5 million meals. We continue to continue to add on to those numbers. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been really good. I've been traveling a little bit, you know, seen a few places, but uh, a lot of training, you know, a lot of, a lot of just keeping in shape for football. Yeah. What have been your thoughts on the off season so far, just kind of for the league, some of the, any big signings you've been kept in, keeping your eyes on or any, I know you guys brought in Sammy Watkins, Mark Ingram um, was released. I think he's probably gonna go to the media. What have been your thoughts on any, some of these storylines? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, for was was very wild this year. It was fun to watch and see all the big, the big bonuses and everything like that. But um, yeah, it, it's always good for guys to get those uh, get those big bonuses. But yeah, um, and then you are you guys like so? What's your kind of like your mindset like as the draft approaches? You just kind of just curious to see what they're doing, or how does that work for you? As, as a, I mean, we just kind of find out after the fact. You know, they're they're going to draft, they're going to draft, and we're going to find out who we have afterwards. So. Um, you know, everyone tries to guess and tries to pinpoint exactly who we're going to get and where they're going to go and yada, 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 but no one really knows. So, um, so I guess we'll find out after the draft. Are there, are there any guys from Bama that are coming in the draft this year that you, you missed, uh, uh, you were on the same timeline with, or are they from after you left? Yeah, most of them are, um, Bonte Smith, um, uh, Landon Dixon, I host him on his, uh, official, um, Alex Leatherwood um mac jones Najee harris oh cool there's there's a, i mean there's a list of them so um yeah. they're, they're slowly starting to file out of my last my last few years so uh so i think after this draft class i may have one or two more guys that I know personally on the team um but yeah so it's uh so it's good you, you said dickerson he's, he's the one who tore his acl but he was doing cartwheels the other day right <laughs> right right yeah yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, so I want to ask you kind of your thoughts on this past season because it's something like but nobody ever thought was going to happen. What was it? Was the whole COVID season like? Just kind of having to kind of like lay back from everything and just all the like the different um, kind of things you had to do and just what was what was it like? It was just bizarre. Or can you talk about that a little? Bit? Yeah, it was a little bit. It was a little bizarre. Uh, but you know, we're just happy we were able to play. Um, the NFL did a great job of of getting us out there on the field, getting us able to play. So you know, it was. It was really good. We're really excited about it. Um, you know, it's definitely way different from anything I've ever played in or experienced before. So, you know, it's uh, it's been it's, it was a good season. We got through it. We didn't finish how we wanted to, but uh, but overall, we're just happy to be able to play all all sixteen games. Do you remember how many COVID tests you've gotten since it started, or you lost count? Um, I want to say we did a count. It was like two hundred and twenty plus. Um, so yeah. So it was a uh, it was a, a a lot of them, but uh, nose got a little raw by the end of yeah. it. So no, I remember because I got it. I got one a test in like July because I thought I might have been exposed, and I did it. Remember, remember when you were a kid and you used to go to the um, dentist and they'd have like little laminated piece of papers. They would flavor do you want? Right. Yeah. yeah. So I I was kind of like making a joke, just kind of like that. And I was like, hey, what flavors do you guys have? And the lady just goes like this one and just went straight up my nose. I'm like, yeah, this is horrible. Um, no, yeah, but it, it, it's wild. Um, so did you, what was it like? So you, you, you got practice, you got games where you just kind of just lay in low doing and nothing else just to get to minimize all risk. Pretty much. I mean, we weren't allowed to go into restaurants. We weren't allowed to go in basically in public, uh, no public service events, no community service events. Um, basically it was football home, you know, so, you know, you order some, some food on Grubhub or DoorDash or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty much, that was pretty much it. Yeah. And because I know the team, the team had a little, like a, basically an outbreak. What was, what was that like? Just kind of like just everything virtual. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was really strange. We had, uh, I want to say 40 plus total staff and players um, that, that contracted the virus, um, unfortunately. And uh, through those, I think two weeks, but um, you know, we were able to, to push through, you know, had a, gave ourselves a shot against the Steelers. We had some young guys that really stepped up and did some amazing things and really showed what they can do. Uh, and just stepped up big for our team so you know it was we were, we were close we were fighting to the end but you know unfortunately it didn't it didn't turn out how we wanted to that game but we got after that we kind of got back on track we started rolling we won six seven straight 
Um, and so, yeah, it was, I think it was a very good test for us, but. The Steelers, you know, there was on a Wednesday, right? Have you ever played on a Wednesday before? Never played on a Wednesday before. Well, I guess JV. I was playing JV on Wednesday. <laughs> Other than that, no. <laughs> what, what, what's kind of preparation is that like? Is it was everything just virtual and you're like, all right, Wednesday, just get ready or? Uh, pretty much that's what it was. Like we came in, a uh, bunch of people started testing positive. They got us out of the building. Um, and then they're like, okay, we're going to play the game on Monday now. Okay, we're going to play the game on Tuesday now. Okay, we're going to play the game on Wednesday now. And everybody's like, okay, are we actually playing the game on Wednesday? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it was it was good. It was, you know, kind of we had to just make it work. Um, yeah. So it, it, was, um, it was just one of those things. You just got to make it work. From the beginning where you were like, all right, we, everybody does their thing. We're going to be safe. And then did it get to the point where, like, you're just waiting? Okay, as soon as the game tips off, we're good. You just got to get to that point. Or was it like you're always wondering, like, am I going to get that call, go home? What was that like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every day you walked in the building, you're waiting to get turned away because um, you had a positive, uh, positive or inconclusive test. Um, so yeah, it was every day. It was like, okay, is there like, someone going to tap me on the shoulder and tell me to get out? But um, I was lucky enough. I didn't didn't have to have that. And, you know, a lot of guys did, but um, you know, fortunately, everyone was okay. Everyone came out okay with it. So um, that was that's the positive out of that. Because the one I remember the most was was Dad's because that was like right before the game. Right. Do you, remember that, do, you remember, yeah. do you remember what happened with that? Yeah, I just remember that he was there one minute, he was going the next. Um, I know he was really excited to play against Dallas. Um, and then, unfortunately, he didn't have the opportunity. Um, so, you know, it was just kind of kind of is what it was last year. You know, it's just there's no really rhyme or reason to it. But, um, you know, just had to – we had to make it work. So, yeah. Um, and then I want to ask, uh, did Lamar have cramps? Um, he said he did, so he had cramps. <laughs> What was that? What was that comeback like? Uh, it was it was absolutely awesome. I mean, it was we were we were up down up down just back and forth with with the Browns. Um, you know, Trace McSorley did a did a great job managing that game. Unfortunately, he got hurt during the middle of it. Um, and then you know, as soon as he went down, okay, it's like we're looking over. It's like okay, Willie Sneed's about to come in. Um, but you know, Lamar came running out of the tunnel. I mean, it was like it was like oh, <laughs> came back. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it was it was all, it was a great experience. It was a great team win for us, and uh, we're just happy to get that win. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I want to ask you. Um, so you had, I think, it's fair to say, you had your best season this year. Um, what was one? What was it like being the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee? And then two, what was it like just kind of like kind of just building your game? Um, as far as the Walter Payton Man of the Year, um, you know, you don't it does it doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, we have such an amazing crew of people, such an amazing staff of people that all go into that and make everything run. My wife is the biggest one out of all of them. And she, she is the one who gets things going. She's, I mean, she's on the ball. She, she, <laughs> she has no time for to sit around and, and wait. So she's make sure that everything's going in the right direction and, uh, and carrying that along. Uh, and then our agency is, is amazing in, in handling all that. And uh, just everyone in this community that has circled us and helped us get to the points we need to, because you know, you can't, you can't, it, it doesn't fund itself, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't just happen all by itself. So it's just a, it's the nomination. I don't think was just for me. It was for all inclusive of everyone that was in our circle in in our group and in our community uh, that has made everything happen. Um, so just so I'm so blessed to, to have all those people and have my amazing wife that, that makes sure everything gets done. But, um, and then as far as um, the season goes, you know, just, just went out there and just played my best every day. That was the goal. Uh, go out there, give it your all, you know, wherever the cookies fall is or the cookie crumbles is where it is. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was a great year for me and just hope to continue to build on that year on year in and year out. Yeah. Who's the toughest guy for you to, to block this year? Um, Cam Hayward a, is a tough one. Um, you know, he's, he's just kind of the, the all around package. He's good run blocker, good, or good run defender, <laughs> uh, good pass blocker, real long, real big. Um, he's, he's a tough, tough guy to block. Um, so yeah, definitely always, whenever we, we go against each other, it's always a, a good battle. So, yeah, I know there's some rumors that a Jim, and Clowney is potentially joining, uh, Cleveland. You're like, guys, they, they're, they're, they've got enough on the D line. No more. We're good. We're good. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's, that's when they like a guy like uh, Clowney goes to anywhere, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, no, you just, just don't go anywhere. You know, it's fine. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, he's he's a great player, a great competitor. You know that that uh, Browns defense is 
is getting stacked and stacked by the year. So, you know, it's uh, if he does end up going there, you know, he's going to be another challenge for us. So, um, so you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. And for the foundation, is there any timeline of when you guys may be able to start doing more kind of going back to in-person events as people get vaccinated and maybe is, is you can mitigate more risk? Is right now is it still strictly virtual? Yeah, we're we're right now we're virtual. We're we're trying to slowly get back into it and trying to you know kind of get a feel for for when we can really get out into the community and get hands on again. Um, you know, obviously the NFL is going to have a big contributor on that if we can go out in public. Um, but also, you know, as 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 far as people's safety and making sure that everyone is is safe and vaccinated, and um, you know, we're we're kind of getting putting this COVID thing behind us, hopefully. Um, and to be able just to get out of the community and see those faces and to be able to help those those people that need helping. So, because I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, I remember when we had you last on, it was kind of right right, right after the pandemic kind of started, and you guys were kind of traveling around the country doing your thing, and you kind of had to halt it. Yeah, so we went from went from Maryland down to Georgia, Alabama, across Texas, out to California, and then we're on our way back. Uh, got all the way back to Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, and you know, the state of the union came out, you know, the basketball courts cleared. Um, and then, you know, we're having counsel with, with our agent and, you know, we're talking and he's like, okay, it's time to come home. Like, you gotta come home. Um, you gotta figure this thing out. So we drove home, uh, from there, unfortunately, but in, during that trip, we were able to talk to about 10,000 students, um, at 18 schools. So it was such an amazing trip, um, just to see the, the carryover from, school to school, whether it was rich or poor or big or small or whatever it may be, um, it, it all had the same carryover. There was all, there's always a big struggle with bullying and all of them almost had the exact same problem. So to see that, to see really how big of a problem this is in our schools and our youth um, was, was very eye-opening because, you know, we're thinking, okay, we're going to have to change our messages from here to here to there, but it was, it was all this, I mean, the exact same all the way through. You guys kind of change it like the, oh, during the pandemic. All right, now it's going to be online bullying because kids are still going to be jerks to one another over the computer. And you got to just because they're in the safety of their own homes doesn't mean they're 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 clear from all of us. Right. Absolutely. That's that's one of the biggest thing we talk about is social media. Social media is such a huge thing because you know I can sit here and talk crap about you behind the screen and there's nothing to happen. Even okay. even when I was growing up, like and that was you know not not too long ago, you know it was it, someone had to say it to your face. You know, and there's repercussions if, you know, that continues to, to go on. Um, so now people are more brave and, and want to want to sit here and text and type and say all these things. But, um, but you know, it's hopefully we can start to get a grasp on that. And we continue to talk to schools via virtually. Uh, and our email is always open to kids. It's, uh, it's Bozeman Char- at bozemancharity.com. Email's on there. It goes to us. Uh, we answer them and, you know, talk through things and talk through situations. So. Um, still had a lot of emails coming in talking to kids. So it's been, it's still been good. You know, unfortunately we can't get in person and see these kids and be able to talk and, yeah. um, and everything, but you know, we're, we're still, we're still trying our best. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to ask you, so last season was the first season without uh, Marshall Yon. Did you reach out to him during the year? Kind of like, kind of just say, hey, do you have any tips kind of how I can grow my game, get better, just kind of advice he gave you or anything like that? Yeah. Just, I just continue to live out the mentality that he has, you know, just, you know, every, every play is the last play. Um, you know, that's, I remember that's one big lesson I learned from him. We're playing the Cleveland Browns uh, in 2019 and it's the first time we played them. Um, and we're losing by like three touchdowns. We go out there with like, I was like a minute 12 left on the clock. And he looks at me and he's like, block your ass off. Just block your, I don't care what the score is, just block your ass off. And that's just that mentality that he carries and um, just to be a dominant player every single snap. So um, yeah, so it's just, just continue to live by that. I've talked to him a couple of times. Yeah. He's, he's been doing a lot of tuna fishing, a lot of hunting. So uh, yeah, I think he's enjoying retirement. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's got uh, one, got one last question. Do you have any funny stories from the season? I know most of it's a lot of virtual, maybe anything funny that happened. You can tell it's PG 13 that no one's going to get in trouble about. Uh, funny story. From the season. Hmm. I don't know any right off bat, but I can, I'll, I'll let you know for sure. If I can think of one. <laughs> uh, sounds good to me sounds good to me and then so just so everybody um how can people find the foundation keep up with you and especially kids if maybe they need to reach out to somebody how can they contact you guys just because somebody's always listening so how, how can they reach out to you right so it's bozemancharity.com um our emails on there our contact information's on there you can find us all on our social medias 
Um, you know, all those are listed on there. Also, there's all this information on our websites. Um, there's places to donate if you feel like donating. Um, and please, if, if you, you're having trouble or, or having problems or whatever it may be, please reach out to us. That email goes directly to Nikki and I. Um, and we're the only ones that see it and we're the only ones that answer it. So um, please feel free. That's a good resource for people to talk through their, their differences and their uh, struggles they're going through. So. Awesome, man. Well, this has been a blast. Appreciate it. Can't wait for next season because like, right, I'm glad there's basketball now, but once it just gets to baseball, like there's nothing on TV. No yeah, right. We need football back on. But yeah, but it's been a blast. I do appreciate you taking the time.